Welcome back to another episode of the Gold Diggers Podcasts. I'm proud to announce that we are now part of the ACAST United family. And please expect very exciting things from us this season. On a sadder note, Her Majesty the Queen passed away a few days ago. And I'd like to take this time to send our condolences to members of the royal family and the general public. As a result, football was cancelled as a mark of respect for the Queen. But today, we'll talk about other topics and the Champions League. Getting back into the episode, I'm your host today, Beatrice, and I'm joined by... Underscore JM Cow. Uh, Gloria, Gloria K underscore XO. Lauren at Lauren Coys. Joyce and Swifty Stones on Twitter. Marva at Marva MSK. Okay, everyone sounds a bit sad. Let's like lie. Oh, sad. Sad. <laughs> well, she yeah. mentioned the Queen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Thomas Tuchel. So he oh. was sat out of no. That came out of absolutely nowhere. No one saw it coming. Gloria put it in the chat, and we were all like, "Is this a prank? What's going on?" Yeah. Gloria. I parody as well. <laughs> I literally had to, I said, no, nah, there's no way that came from the official account. So I had to go on their account and I saw, oh, uh, there's like millions of followers. I said, yeah, it's definitely true. <laughs> and then I got the notification from the app and I said, wow, that lasted five days. Literally, how can you sack a manager five days after the transfer windows closed and you've bought players to fit their system? It just didn't make sense. I was really, really shocked because I, I thought we'd wait at least till like, December, like even international break would have made sense. But um yeah, I I think I was I was, I was very very sad that day. I was like, wow, like what's gonna happen now? Where do we go from here? Because I'm thinking, what good managers are out there at the moment that are available? Um, but obviously now we have uh, Graham Potter. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But um, <laughs> yeah, I was I was very upset, but I think I'm kind of starting to get over it, and also I'm kind of starting to get behind the the project that they're planning to go ahead with. Um, but yeah, it was it was kind of sad day. Yeah. Do you think it's something that had been they've been working on for a long oh, time? Absolutely. Or? There's no because the way everything happened, like. We were sacked on Tuesday, Wednesday we have a new manager. Like that was planned. And there's no way you're telling me that you only found out about Graham like the day before. Like mm. I feel like they've been planning this for a long time. And they just I think one other thing I thought was is they probably kept Tusha till now so they can get players to come in. Because obviously Tusha has some sort of pool. And mm. then after they've got the players, they can say, you know what, well, goodbye everybody. Um and then yeah, um, so I, yeah, I think it was planned a, a long time ago, from the moment that Marina was sat, um, Czech left, all of these people, um, I feel like it was coming, but they just needed time to just get all things. You can't just sack everybody. Like, mm. that's just going to go to you. Like, shit, okay, let's just assume mm-hmm. that it was all planned and the owners mm-hmm. knew what they were doing. Do you think Tuchel saw it coming? No. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Seriously, no. I actually don't think he I saw feel that. like he had a success. Genuinely, think, like, like, the way you were speaking. Why sure. do you think the way you were speaking that post match? I I felt like that was him kind of leaving, like releasing his hands from no, the club I and going. Like you know what? Match, it's in God's hands. Yeah, frustration. Yeah, like, it's just frustration. It like, you know, you've just tried your best. You've you've told them what to do. You've said do this, do that, and they're not doing it. You're just frustrated. So I I don't think he saw that coming. I think when he walked into the office that Monday morning, he just thought, oh. Like, it was just going to be like a day-to-day catch-up mm. like what's going on. Nah, like, I disagree. I genuinely do. Cold. And that's, <laughs> only, <laughs> and that's <laughs> only because of the way that Bowley has been moving since the trial. Like, all this money that he's been throwing about, the guy wanted to employ Ronaldo. Mm. Like, realistically, yeah. I and Tisha were like, no, it's yeah, not happening. Sort of that, thing. That was so it's been why. bickering before this has happened. So I feel like eventually mm. you sort of saw it, Fair like, enough. if they didn't. I think he probably had it in his mind that if he doesn't pattern up, quite quickly that he's going to get sacked but to do that literally six was it six days or five days after the transfer with them makes no sense it was very harsh that yeah. the, the center backs is. haven't really worked together for a long time to see if the partnership is going to work and now it's like i think there's a lot of not confusion but it's like what does that like, show? but that's yeah, why i don't yeah. think it was like planned planned i don't think it was like a thought out thing i think it's more them being like we need to like stamp our authority and show like oh we're gonna make big moves like when well, we need to make big yeah. moves because if it's a case of bringing players using his pool to bring players in but why would you go for someone like Aubameyang who's so clearly there for two yeah, exactly. and yeah, has yeah. you know had problems in the past of like getting on with managers yeah. he's not clearly not yeah. like the easiest person to to get along with mm-hmm. and now you've got someone like Potter who i think will do well but 
it's just like such a mismatch of people now. Mm. Which is why I feel like it was a very harsh and hasty decision because now it's like, where does it leave the players? Because clearly it's like, like you said, they hadn't had the chance to actually see how it's going to work on the pitch. And it's just mm. like, it just seems all, I just feel like the players are kind of the ones who got to really like feel, mm. feel it the most because it's like, what but next? Then again, they're, they're also to blame because like, you you're going on the pitch and you're not playing like you want to be here. Like, it's going to contribute to the manager being sacked. So I think, fair enough, you can you can feel a certain way about the fact that they've been sacked and that, oh, you don't have that security, you don't know what's going to happen, your future's uncertain. But then again, you have to hold yourself accountable for the fact that you're not performing on the pitch as well. Mm. So I just, I don't know, I, I think it's a two-way thing. It could, I do think it was planned from a long time ago, but the loss on Tuesday, I believe, just contributed to it. It was just like, yeah, you know, pack your bags, it's time to go now, let's mm. yeah. keep the step in. Um, but yeah. Can you see the players getting behind Potter? They mm. better. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, have have no they haven't got a they choice. They have no choice. Like, listen, if if I was Broly, I'll start telling them if you don't play on the pitch today, you're not getting your paid receipt. Like, you need Talking to start about doing something. <laughs> Broly, clearly, you're not the man not offered the... a what four four three formation. <laughs> yeah. The man don't know what he's doing. Uh, you don't know what he's doing. Don't know You don't just know money and vibes. That's probably not true. But still, it's just like. I need people to play it like they want to be there. Like, when I look at, for instance, I don't want to bring United up, but Martinez, yeah, he plays like he wants to be there. Mm. That's the kind well, of... No, but listen, I don't think Martinez is a fair example to use because he's Otherwise, new at yeah. United. He's new in the Premier League. So he's still got that exactly. raw yeah. passion. Bombs, like, well, Mason Mount played. I think Bowley showing <laughs> that he's thinking about his brand Yes. More so than he's thinking about his football organisation. And for me, I think he's showing his inexperience because regardless of your opinion on your manager, sacking them five days after a window closes, um, you've brought in players, whoever comes in can't make any changes. You know, we're, well, right now the, the players are not playing, but you're playing twice a week. You, your Potter doesn't have any time on the training ground. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm looking and thinking... It's almost as if he's putting his own personal pride before the club. And I just think the timing, it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, the timing is horrible, honestly. I think, I mean, they've had a couple extra days to train together now. But still, I just think... Only time will tell. Yeah. Are we sure the timing is horrible, though? Because Chelsea have been in poor form. And this new manager could mean that they have the new manager bounce. That new we'll manager about to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's gonna be crazy for Potter CV. Yeah. 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 You want to leave? You can pull something out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> he only needs Listen. to get to the World Cup though. Exactly. Then, the bounce just needs to last at the World Cup. Exactly. Yeah. And then he gets more time. It's just gonna have to be, yeah. All, yeah. All his, his first game as the Chelsea manager will probably be in the Champions League, mm. and you're facing RB, RB Salzburg. Yeah. What are you? Oh, the of How do you see that match going? Um. I'm expecting something. I need a better performance than what I saw last week. Mm. That's for sure. Um, I don't watch the other teams. So I don't know exactly how they play. But I expect us to win that game. Because I think we have quality players. So I expect us to win that game. I don't care how, but you better win that game. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. straight off the bat, you're expecting results. You're not yeah. saying, oh... I'm going to give him some time to see how he can put the team Adjustments. together, etc. Yeah, I want results. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> in context care. with the Champions League, it makes sense because you've got There's no, no time, time stage. Yeah. Like, you There's don't no really have the time stage. There's no time. Win. But then why hire someone like Potter who his whole thing is building a project? Exactly. Like, mm. Chelsea aren't going to wait around for you to, like, build something. Unless you are going to give him time, that's what Potter needs is to actually build a project because yeah. he implements mm. his style of football. Mm. He implements his whole project into a team Chelsea seemed like the worst team to do that. exactly even last the, the yeah, golden oh. project didn't really get that much time I think going. Going. Chelsea don't operate like look that look at him at Everton now now we have <laughs> 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 um. we have new management now so hopefully the old days of just second managers will stop but I, I don't know honestly I, I expect us to win that game simply because I want I want to see that there's some sort of change in terms of even just mentality wise. I want to see that these players 
are in it for the good one. So what do you think can change between your last loss against Dynamo Zagreb? Mason Mount being on the bench. And now <laughs> Mason Mount being on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a Mason Mount stan or I don't hate him either. So whoever needs to be benched, I bench. I don't care. Like I don't care who you are. If you need to be benched for the goodness of the team, please be sitting on that. Wasn't bench. Sterling playing like centre mid at some point? Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 close. I watched that glimpse of the game, but the parts that I saw, I said, "Wow!" Everyone was just out of position. Yeah. 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 I watched it. Was the it match did, was crazy. It did feel like chaotic. it did feel like a manager coming to the end of his reign, but like sped up version yeah so, yeah, yeah. yeah. One yeah. Game, it was like what's happening i think here? once the like... game ended it was like yeah, it's, yeah nobody knew what to say it was just like it all just walked off yeah i know i'm behind kind of what pulisic and flipping was it sterling mm. up front that was just chaotic oh yeah. god you better continue pulisic will play he's american it's all about yeah. American. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, just yeah. even mason you. mount i can't, no offense but i don't expect him to be dropped yeah. because yeah. he's mm. you know yeah. You, I mean, one of your star boys. Just, I know. No, 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 no. These people love him job. too much. <laughs> <laughs> they, need to, they need to let go of him. He needs to be dropped. He needs to be dropped. I'm so sorry. Like, but that's why I think it's interesting with Potter because your expectation is he comes in and he wins the first game. This will be the first time he'll be at a club where the expectation is that you win every mm. single game, game that you play. And I think the expectation um and the egos that he'll have to manage mm, i'm yeah. interested to see how he'll cope with that it's because you know at brighton no one really cares if brighton wins also, or loses like, and they get I extra swear praise there's, there's like well. a mandela effect with brighton because every season yeah you think they're doing like amazingly well because like they start well they they do really well against like some big teams and they mm. get some good wins against then like they then they come and, the, and then yeah. i'll watch a game a random game of those and you'll hear the commentator say and they haven't won in 10 games <laughs> <laughs> you see they're like 10th and you're like yeah that makes sense because they beat some good teams but then it's like they don't stay that consistent i think actually to be fair on part of this year seemed more so actually like he seems more given that they lost some key players but their structure still stayed the same and they still seemed as impressive i was like you know what i think they'd actually have a better season than before mm-hmm. when they're a bit inconsistent but even so i'm like at a team where you have to, like you're saying win basically every game on. that's not something i know they've got mm-hmm. better players than brighton but that's not something he was necessarily being consistent at, at Brighton. Mm. So given that, <laughs> <laughs> given that this is essentially the biggest job of his career, yeah. what are your expectations from him? Um, I think my expectations for this um, season is top four. I don't really, um, I'm not very concerned about like UCL. I think, I want us to get to at least around 16 like at least but I feel like um, I want us to get to a point where we at least get top four for next season and then build from that point onwards um yeah that's my expectations for him should should that ambition be raised though? Because I I feel like you can't go and spend three hundred million <laughs> in the transfer window and be like, yeah. oh, we'd be happy with four. Top four, four. I'm not saying I said top four. I didn't say fourth. I said top four. <laughs> yeah, but that means that's about, fourth is included yeah, in that. Like, so. Yeah, but I didn't say it was fourth or third. I said top four. As long as I see that we're playing Champions League football next year. Well, like season, Lauren said, you're not spending like, a load of money. Yeah, we didn't spend a lot of money, more. so that's why I expect them I to win and the results. When I said I Arsenal could be a part of it, I was crazy. I would be talent, yeah, talent race. But right now, I want—I don't want to be—I don't want Arsenal fans or any Spurs fans to come and come for my neck. So I'm happy with top four. I didn't say fourth place. That's a top four. What about second, third, first? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, um, I think I yeah, that's my expectation. Lauren, what about you? Um, as a as a Tottenham fan, what are your expectations of Chelsea given that they've spent so much money? I would expect, given how much money they spent, that they would be in a title race. I I, I really would because I think, um, okay, last season, you know, Man City and Liverpool just ran away with it, and we were all trying to catch up. Mm-hmm. But I I think considering the some of the signings that have come in, it, I know if my club spent 300 million and I'm still battling for the same targets I was battling the season before, mm. I'd be pissed off. Mm. I hear what you're saying, but also I think, because we are in a transition period. Who created this transition period for no, there's you? A lot, there's a lot that's happened, like new management, like all these things. I think to expect 
like stability the way it was like previously and to get like first place is just slightly unrealistic but I, from next season I expect that that's just, that's just, <laughs> that's just <laughs> that's just <laughs> yeah that's just bad <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't feel like I still think top four but not like fourth place no, I'm not saying third second or first but within that space we, I think we can do it I mean Thomas Tuchel won the Champions League in his first year at Chelsea mm. why can't you put the same expectation on Potter he's never played in the Champions League <laughs> <laughs> he's never managed a team that's played in the Champions League so that's why I don't have like huge expectations in terms of us getting to the final for instance so yeah okay we'll see how Chelsea <laughs> plays this season mm. um let's take a closer look at the Champions League so Chelsea lost 1-0 to Dynamo Zagreb um Liverpool also lost 4-1 to Napoli. <laughs> nice. I mean, I don't know if you, any when of you are, guys... When are we, are we, are we, are we, are we getting a Liverpool final? We need to get a Liverpool person immediately. That I can continue my Mo Salah agenda. Because Liverpool lost 4-1 to Napoli. Yeah, Liverpool lost 4-1 to Napoli. No, but I'd, is it fair to place, I mean, blame on Mo Salah? Of course not, no. Him, but no, but he hasn't, he he hasn't, hasn't been there. Like, like, he's, he yeah, he's been, he's been quite absent. But I think their whole team, <laughs> no, their whole team from back to front is it's, all over the place. It's the midfield. midfield. If you're starting a midfield that's either got Jordan Henderson, James Milner in it, yeah, or if you're not going to play them, you're going to play two teenagers in it. And then some... <laughs> yeah. no, no, yeah. no, 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 who's who's passing to... Mo- is he meant to create the chances himself? He was, though, no, previous, season. previous season. Well, he had his fullbacks like helping him out a little bit. Yeah. Now, this but time, like, they're now- a bit... You got Van Disney at the back. You got, <laughs> you got, no, no, no. You got Trent as well. That's just ooh, no, Trent. Trent, 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 be there, like he, I was like, was it the third goal? The, the third, third goal, goal. you just, just, just the first goal, you stopped. Just the first goal, you stopped. You said, wow. wow, like the body language at Liverpool mm, is yeah, just saying something else. It just now. says, no one just wants to play. I think it says help. It's just like help us. No, but but that's the question help them is like themselves. Are we looking at Klopp's final season for Liverpool? Like Ooh, realistically, <laughs> because he said he's not getting fired. Yeah, he said true confidence. Klopp said he's not going to operate like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I guess he has a right to be confident, but like there it. becomes a point where enough is enough. And if the players stop showing the fight that we're used to them <clears> seeing, <throat> that we're used to seeing from them, then it's a big problem. If it keeps going the way it is until like December, there's going to be a lot of red flags going around. Like there's already the massive red flags. No, but I mean, moment. if it's still going I on, think once, yeah. If Thiago comes back and they still don't, and they still have the same problems, exactly. Then, because right now, what most Liverpool fans are blaming on is one Milner <laughs> and two just generally their midfield and no. like the, not that same intensity. So I think yeah. if Thiago comes back in, Fabinho stays fit. Like what? What, what the can thing? they want? Yeah. 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 away from their injury-prone player will come back and he'll get injured again. again. And they've got Arthur Melo now as well. So I'm like, if you've got them free playing and you're still and the same problems are coming, then. But I feel like even their issues. forwards, they're quite unbalanced. Uh, Nunes, Nunes and, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a mess up, up front as well. So I feel like from back to front, Calamity, honestly, just because it's, they didn't, they replaced Mane with a completely different player that doesn't mm-hmm. play. That, that uh, is just unbalanced now. He's definitely yeah. missing on the team. Yeah. So of course, missing. like I feel like of course Mo Salah's not going to be playing well because essentially him and Mane had this sort of they were competing against each other to produce and but he doesn't have that anymore. Salah's a, yeah. a goal scorer. Salah's a goal scorer. Game was nine goals, so there were clearly chances being created. He had about yeah, five he didn't score in that game. That he didn't score yeah, there was one goal he did. It was like, how did you miss that? Like, yeah, how did okay. you miss that? He got that pay rise and said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. So considering Liverpool's poor form, do we have high expectations of them this season? Should we hold them to the standard that we're used to holding them? Yeah, we have to yeah. hold them to that standard. I'm but t- they're way off it, I think, at the at the moment. I still feel I think they'll get top four. Um, because I don't think they can play this badly for the whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if you're playing this badly for l- long enough, other teams are already like surpassing you. So. But that's the thing. I I feel like the season has started where I don't. I, I even don't think City will run away with it. Um, maybe post Christmas, but it it feels like everyone is there to drop points at the moment, right. you know. Regardless, so I don't think we're gonna see someone win the league by Christmas. Um, so I think if if Liverpool get to November, 
and then it's terrible. That's going to force their owners to go and at least buy a midfielder in January. Um, so I think <clears throat> yeah. they could recover and, and still get top four. What about in the Champions League? How do you expect them to play there? <sighs> they continue playing how they play. It's going to be a very short run. It's going to be a short run. It's going to be a short run. Yeah, the way they're playing it's going to be a short run. So their next game is Ajax. Yeah. What are we saying? Do we think they can beat them? Um, Joyce? You know what? I don't know, because you know these people like to talk about Liverpool mentality. So I want to see this Liverpool mentality. <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see it because they have to be fighting for something this season. Be yeah. Like realistically, they've got the FA Cup, Carabao Cup as well. But like, I mean, it's it's normally like the the Champions League is normally Liverpool's kind of game. So hopefully they kind of pick it up. But mm. who knows? We'll start doing. We've spoken about the two teams that lost. Now City are one of the English teams that did win their game. Mm-hmm. How did that game go? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> You've rocked my world. Tell you that. <laughs> Harland. Sky. Blessing from above. I don't know why it was made, but machine. No. Nah. Yeah, he was yeah. made Robot. in the lab. Next level. No, nah, but it's like apart from all this praise, obviously I think uh Pep had said in one of the pre match interviews that like we can't rely on Harland to like kind of feed us like these wins and whatever so it was nice to see uh Foden contribute as well because I think Foden's kind of been off the ball recently as well um I think he's finally slightly getting back into groove um but yeah I just kind of want to see how things are going because realistically um I mean Haaland won't be playing during well, not the international break, but the F- the, the World Cup. So, um, hopefully, he stays fit. But we also know what it's like uh, to see Haaland injured as well. Obviously, not for us. But that then will raise massive questions as to who will be providing the goals because we've been here and there. We've we've sort of like been good at playmaking, but the final finishing, if mm. it's not Haaland near the the like. The post, it's not gained in. Mm. So, yeah. Apart from that, it was a great. It was a great match. Um, but yeah, well, we've got Dortmund next, so we shall see. We shall see. Mm. But, yeah. Do you expect to beat them? I have to say yes. I mean, at the end of the day, we're in the group <laughs> stages. Like we have to. We have to. And we've never really had too much of an issue. And obviously, we had. Did we play Dortmund last uh, campaign? I think we did. Yeah. But yeah, and we beat them there as well. So hopefully same performance there but it'd be easy to get rid of competition now and have an mm. easier run later but yeah okay and lauren tottenham with the other english team who also won how did that game go um i can't lie at half time i was thinking i can't believe i paid Come watch this. <laughs> <laughs> we did we had we started the game as we started many of our games we we didn't play very well um but our new number nine thank you mother <laughs> um, yeah I think for me to see you know everybody knows that we we're heavily relying on on Kane and Sonny to get goals in our side and to now know that we've got another player who will turn up when we need him you know he, he got the job done um a couple of great headers um first game at home it's really important to start well um uh, and we have done, and we've got two away games now. I mean, I'm happy with our, our, our draw. I, I'll be disappointed if we don't top the group anyway. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I feel that there's so much more to come from Spurs, but at the moment we're getting the job done. Mm. Um, so I can't complain too much. So, yeah, I think we've got um, sport in Lisbon on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, tough away game, but I expect three points. Um and yeah, it was it was nice to to hear the Champions League music again. <laughs> yeah, it really must good. be nice. I mean, United <laughs> can't say the same, but hey, what, <laughs> small boss, all right. Or oh, you down there? How was Thursday? <laughs> Arsenal. Yeah, we won in the Europa. Yeah. Honestly, I was not even paying attention to Europa League. I know that United did not win, but did you I get shall. The, how did oh you? yeah, you lost. Yeah, oh yeah, but it was, the VAR was. It I, can't was lie, I didn't watch it. It was a bit questionable, yeah. yeah I heard a lot of people complain decision. about the penalty. Too. I mean, I mean, I saw the incident, and if that's what we call a penalty penalty um, nowadays, then football <laughs> is, you know, Ooh. it's a mess. But hey, let's move on to the Premier League now. Mm. 
the games haven't gone um, ahead this weekend because, you know, of what we mentioned earlier. Um, and next weekend, do we know whether it's coming back or not? I think it seems like it is going From to resume. From the Saturday, yeah. Like There's a yeah. match on, yes. Yeah. So, okay. The, oh, really? Was, yeah. I think there's like like a question happen. mark about the London teams because of policing. Yeah, yeah there's going to be a lot of people on the streets. But as so, I've seen, it's still seen as scheduled for this weekend. But then Monday, of course. Is... Might change their mind. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, considering that the funeral is on the Monday, a lot of people might be, you know, doing what they do on the weekend. But I don't know <clears throat> how many teams in London are playing. So Chelsea are at yeah. home and Brentford are Brent at home against well. Arsenal. Yes. So even if they wanted to reverse that fixture, they yeah, couldn't really. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so that, that game needs to be played in London regardless. But, yeah. Let's talk about the league in general. Mm. So Arsenal are still, you know, top of the league. Mm-hmm. Do you expect this form to continue? I expect it to continue, but we still have more challenges to come. I feel like, obviously, Man United was their first challenge. And the one thing that kind of annoys me is, like, they always l- they get into their heads too much. And I feel like with the Man United game, they had the opportunity to kind of draw it back once it became, you know, one all. I feel like they just kind of lost it. I think they panicked. After the panic, I don't know why. I feel like the substitution. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the formation. Yeah. Yeah. formation. <laughs> I listen. I I was so confused. I feel like it was just complete panic. I was just like, yeah. we did have to do that. So I feel like I said, I feel like we need to be confident when playing. You know, the top teams. teams. Yeah, because I feel like why can't we feel that we could, you know, go against them? I feel like we have a young team. We still are learning. We're still getting around it. But I feel like at the end of the day, we started off strong. Why can't we continue? Yeah, because I feel like your team was the better team for most of the game. Mm-hmm. And you should have kept it the same. Exactly. Because it was like, working. Yeah. You saw it and it's like when he switched it, I was just like, well, there goes the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's there's no point. Well. So, yeah, I feel like I said, we still got a few more games that I think the next few games that, you know, we're predicted to win. Or I feel like we can, you know, hold our own. Is but what, what's Liverpool in one of those? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is Brentford, you I'm have sure. us as well, North London Derby's first game after international break. Oh, mm-hmm. sweet. Okay, well. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, then we'll see then more Definitely challenges more challenges come. like I said <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like if they listen they're a good team and I feel like we just need to believe in ourselves more and it shouldn't be a thing where we can only win against the non big teams. teams yeah small yeah. teams it's not that I feel like we could just have to keep going what are your expectations for Arsenal this season like I said I feel like why can't we be challenging challenge, why yeah. can't we challenge? I didn't say we're going to challenge I said why can't we challenge I just feel like at the moment definitely top four um and if we can challenge for it, if we can, you know, you know, just shock everyone, why not? Last time was going to be crazy. I said, so, I think, cool time to charge with your chest. <laughs> but my thing is this, right? It's like, mm. why can't I cool charge just with my chest? And no one said that you're saying you're saying your team should be confident, but you should be confident too to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. What do the confidence? Am I on the pitch or are they on the pitch? I mean just I'm just doing my part and just, you know, give them my two pence. You're not cheering them hard enough. You should cheer for your new manager. Oh my god. Um, do we all think Arsenal can be consistent and challenge for that title? I feel like it's difficult to answer the question because I agree. I think the first challenge was we turn up at Old Trafford and, and beat that Old Trafford, like the Man United team that's still finding its feet and you failed that challenge. And I think there will be more challenges to come, especially... Um, You've got us uh, in October as well, mid-October. Yeah, so, so that's so what Chelsea. However, first, we do um, have like a crazy run before that. We've got... Actually, we've, yeah, so we've got Dortmund the week after... Uh, before that we've got Copenhagen as well mm. and then we have Liverpool literally just before you guys on the weekend so excuse coming out already no, 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 no I'm telling you I'm just telling you that I make it, I'm not even going to say I'm expecting no, you guys no, to beat it, us it, but it, the lineup that we have there's actually no excuse because what you guys have got conference league what, I don't even know what you guys played so <laughs> Like, where does that come from? Wow. <laughs> where does that come from? <laughs> <laughs> you always been asking the question. Someday on Thursday, innit? You said conference. Well, it's really bad. 
back to though, because I remember like for years when Arsenal were challenging or at least challenging like top four fully, they'd always be they do well, do well, and then February. Remember the just February capitulation. As I mm-hmm. said, like I mean, just Less, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just you know. Just but no, I think they'll hold the position until about Christmas time. I don't think there'll be like too many major changes within like the top four. Maybe we'll see like Liverpool kind of creep up a bit more. But that's the gap is really. quite close, even yeah. between yeah. us and Arsenal. I think it's only three points. Yeah, something like that. So it's yeah. quite close at the minute. No, what was that for, Joyce? I didn't no. that. What? What was that for? That oh, what do you mean? Regardless of... I think everybody is going to drop points between now and November. Yeah. So I think there's not going to be, I think, clear front runners because you're mm. right. You, whoever's in seventh or eighth is literally a couple of points off teams who are first, second, third. So, yeah, I think it'll be interesting as well because Arsenal's terrible February-type run there will also be more games to play because mm. no one's going to be playing in November until, what, Boxing Day. Yeah. Um, so actually, yeah. Also just how the World Cup affects it. Exactly, like, if yeah. If starts every game for England, oh. like, if he goes on a good run, yeah, he starts oh. every game for England. He's going to rest that young man. Or rest that young man. Jesus or whoever, it's like, you don't yeah. know, right now, it's not really that clear who's starting for Brazil. Right I mean, now. Uh, Jesus is going to make the squad. He didn't make a friendly. I think that's only because Arsenal doesn't really let their players go. Yeah, that's what I said, no, yeah. I reckon. World Cup, definitely, but friendly's now. But it's like, how much of, like, we don't really know how much playing time a lot of these players are going to get at the World Cup. And if they, it tends to be that, you know, a few of them, if it ten, if it turns out that they're going to be like the main man for their their country, exactly. that could have a big effect on the games that come mm. after. But right now you can't really tell. Because it could be Richarlison, it could be... No, Jesus, it will. It could like, be like, I'm same worried. Same with England. Like, exactly. Like, like, yeah. Same with England. Same with the captain. Same with the captain. Same with the Whoever, whoever gets yeah, chosen, exactly because like, most likely, like Los Sancho, he's probably back in the league, back in the um, squad, team yeah, now. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, but he's probably going to be on the bench for the most part. But that's so. what I'm saying. We don't really know, don't know. So, like, how that plays out. It's going to have a big effect on the rest of the season mm. as well. I mm. want to go around and get everyone's top four <coughs> predictions based on how things currently are in the league. Because I don't think I've heard you guys' predictions yet, so I think that'll be quite interesting. <laughs> interesting, <coughs> Lauren. Um, I think City. City number one. I can't call Arsenal. Oh, in order. So oh, I'll go in order. Yeah, yeah, I'll go, yeah so I'll, I order. think City will win the league. Okay. Based on current form, I'm gonna put my neck out and say Spurs second, Arsenal third, Liverpool fourth. Current form. Current Are you form. sure? Current form. Yeah, in, this, this, this current form. This Liverpool current fourth. form. Yeah, this current. We're one point behind Arsenal, and Arsenal apart the one but, challenge they've had to play. No, is, but is Arsenal United, based on form, Arsenal is currently the better team than you. I'd say you ask. Yeah, and uh, do I think Arsenal will maintain this form? Okay, by the so, end of the season, that's why I think. It, so you're locking it in. Like you said City number one. Yeah, I will go Spurs, Spurs Arsenal, Arsenal third, mm-hmm. and Liverpool fourth. Damn. Okay, Gloria. Yeah, I, I think it will take Potter too long to get the, the squad going. <laughs> so I know you're not doing this. I think it will take Potter too long. So wait, is this at the end of the season? Yes, or, your okay. top four predictions. For the Premier League, um, I mean, City, City is going to be first. Um, second, I'm going to say, ah, <laughs> I don't believe in Liverpool right now. I don't think they'll get the second spot, but oh, they can come back. Um, <laughs> hey, it's not looking good. Um, okay, I'll say City, I'll go Liverpool. Um, I'll say, Chelsea, and then Arsenal. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> it's tip for tap. Yeah. Joyce. <laughs> um. Okay. Based on current form. Yeah. Or how that's you see the league going. Oh, it's going. Okay. Cool. Um. First. Man City. Mhm. What well, do you see that much in Man United? <laughs> <laughs> if I say first, you don't call me delusional. Mm-hmm. So no, it. just just believe in like yeah. what say what you believe. What you if that's what you really believe, believe, say it. <laughs> ah. Okay, what well, I believe, what well, I truly believe. Okay, cool. Man City first. <laughs> 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 Let's be real. Man City first. Second. 
Say it with your chest. God, I know no, you're no, 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 Wait, let her speak. <laughs> I, I, me, I'm just thinking you're on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Second, I'm going to say... Hmm. You know what you want to say. Just no, say exactly. it. No. Come on. Oh, you guys, I'm unpredictable. A second. Arsenal. Um, yeah, we knew that was coming. Oh. Third, I want to say Liverpool. Fourth. Spurs. Mm. Chelsea. Mother. I actually really don't know. Um, you got to give us something. Man City first, definitely. I feel like there might be quite a big gap towards the end of it. Like, I think it'll be close between second and fourth. Mm -hmm. Well, not between first and second. Mm -hmm. So, I think... I just don't know if I trust Arsenal. Um, (laughs) But Liverpool look terrible right now. Alright, I still think Liverpool might get back up there. So I'll put them second. Oh, this is tough. Um, to be honest, I'm winging it here. I'm just going to say Arsenal third. No, nah, Chelsea third. And then it's going to be between Arsenal and Spurs. I think both are going to fall off after Champions League football and World Cup. Mm. So either one of them. Right, Joyce. Uh, obviously, City first. Second. I don't think any of you bums deserve seconds. So I'm going to... I'm going to go there. 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 i am going to go there i am going to go there i am going to what club is playing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How many times you guys are like dropping out, or whatever. But um, I think Arsenal will be sitting at third. Second, damn second. I think I just have to give it to Liverpool just for the sake of it. To be fair, because mm-hmm. it's just always been like that. And then fourth, you know, surprisingly, I might actually have to give it to United. The only person mm-hmm. that has put United in their top four. They might even they might even sit in fifth. But, but okay, I think it'll be close between United and Chelsea. Yes, can we all speak? United first. I'm gonna say Chelsea second. Chelsea second. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say City first. Then I'm gonna throw in Tottenham at second. I'm gonna put United third, and then fourth. I'm actually gonna put Arsenal. You're a hater. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the reason I'm putting it. Chelsea out of it is just because they've got a new manager. It's too and soon. I'm personally I'm not really sure about this manager and the challenge at Chelsea. So I'm gonna say this season they might miss out on that. And I'm putting Liverpool out of it because Jurgen's gonna capitulate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Those are my predictions. Okay. Mm. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Marvel, I don't want to leave you out. So where do you think um, Everton's going to come? <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Anyways, oh, over so to the relegation battle. Go to the Everton's. Yeah, no, let's, let's, let's do who we think is going to get relegated. Ooh. I think, yeah. What's I got to do with Everton? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Back your team. I'm going to start with you on that one, Marva. Who do you think um, are the three teams to get relegated this season? I think Bournemouth, for sure. Um, I think they'll put up a fight, but yeah, I think ultimately. I think Nottingham for us good as well. Like I know they've signed a lot of players, but it's one of those where <clears throat> sometimes when you sign so many, it just doesn't click. Like, mm-hmm. click. Um, and that was a shocking loss to Bournemouth the other week as well. And then... I don't know. I don't think it'll be Fulham. I don't think all three of the promoted mm. teams will go down. Um, I think it's too easy to say Leicester because I think Rogers will get sacked within a few weeks and then they'll be all right. Um, but wishful thinking would be Leicester or Southampton. Mm. And not Everton, obviously. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Joyce? Oh, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking. The way West Ham are playing at the moment, I don't think I'll ever, I don't think in this lifetime I will ever, ever see West Ham get relegated, but 
the way they're playing at the moment, yeah. it's like they, 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 they're been shaking. shaking to be relegated. Yeah, like, it's been shaking. So, I don't know. I don't think, yeah. I think they'll be sitting right outside of the relegation zone. Mm, and yeah. I think it will hope, hopefully will wake them up for next season because I don't see them turning it around this season, to be fair. But mm. yeah, Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest, definitely. And the way their wage structure is going to suffer next season. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, though. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, nah. Um... I think the Southampton will probably be able, they'll they'll be able to sort of sort it out. I think um, so. I think it's easy. To, it's, it's easy to say yeah. Leicester might mm. have to take the hit this season, but yeah, because Fulham are playing way too great to to be, be touching yeah. anyway. Yeah. 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 Even like yeah. Villa look shocking. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's so hard. Villa, oh, like, yeah, if, gonna, if, they, if the managers get sacked, then my well, I would. The, it's hard to make a prediction. Mm. I. Th- I because I think Gerard's on borrow time. Yeah. Lampard is on borrow time. <laughs> Rogers, <laughs> if he, if Leicester don't improve again, borrow time. Yeah, to the job centre. Uh, Rogers, oh. Rogers is so on um, borrow time. He's like got like a game. Yeah, he's, 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 on, the yeah. he's on the edge. He's on the edge. Yeah, I think it's tough because then it's like okay, so which manager comes? I'm trying to think who has the worst <clears throat> squad. So yeah. even if they get a new manager. There's no going back. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no, no going back it, anyways. Yeah. I think definitely Bournemouth have to... Oh, yeah. Have to yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're terrible. They still have some players from the, the last time they got relegated. They're just not, <laughs> oh. good. They're just not good enough. Mm. Um, I don't... I, I feel like Everton maybe if you don't sack Lampard quick enough. Um, and... Oh, I think it's hard. Maybe, maybe Forrest if that squad doesn't gel. Because I don't see them sacking... What's his name? Steve Cooper. Mm. I yes. think he'll be there. I think he'll yeah, stay throughout yeah. the whole season. Gloria? Um, Bournemouth is definitely going down. Put them to an year. Um... <laughs> 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 I didn't know you were doing the position. <laughs> um, I'm just going to the bottom. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think... Um, with Leicester, though, as much as, like, no, it's 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 sticky. Um, yeah, Forest I think could potentially go down because I think they they signed too many players. It's gonna take a while, and they don't have that facility to allow everyone to gel before they can start producing results. Um, so I'd say them, and then I'd say I'm still not convinced about Deeds, but I wouldn't put them. Mm. I'm not too sure if I put them in the relegation zone or just outside. But I would say, uh, for now, I would say, I'd stay, I'll say Leeds for now, for now. Joyce? Same as Gloria, to be fair. So yeah, definitely Bournemouth. Um, Forest, it's just, yeah, too many players. It's going to take a while for them to really find their feet. Um, I was going to say either Leeds or... Probably Everton as well, depending mm. on Lampard. I'm there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it's watch just the Merseyside derby, guys. We looked good. Yeah, <laughs> they're, 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 you, you tend to look good against Liverpool well, in the last like two years. When? In the last when? two years, <laughs> last year, you did well against Liverpool. Not really. Like it was a different game in that we were right, but we had about twenty percent possession. Whereas this, this yeah, game, we actually you had got like, fair enough. Maybe like forty-five. I think but, for me, I'd say my predictions are Bournemouth. Um, I. Mm, I'm going to say Fulham. Mm -hmm. I think with the amount of money that Forrest has spent, I feel like they stay out, man. They spent so much money. They have to. I I need to start seeing Jalen's ball. (laughs) (laughs) They've got Henderson as well, and he's actually a good keeper. So I think Forrest will stay up. Um, I'm going to say Fulham, Bournemouth. I don't want to put Leicester in there because I feel like they'll manage to stay out of it. They'll be okay. Yes, maybe a villa uh, they need to maybe a villa i say villa january mm. though leicester because i don't see mm. out of because rogers's preference is to play vardy i can't see them in. getting enough goals to yeah. yeah he's been playing yeah. poor i'm sorry do you know the thing the biggest thing with leicester is their goalkeeper 
Oh, yeah. Daniel Vardy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. terrible. Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. Yeah. He's they probably the worst one in the league. Like, they benched Vardy. He and actually got a goal in what, like, the third yeah. minute or something. And then just shambles. Yeah. Like, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's oh. crazy. It's crazy. Oh. Oh, <laughs> and your um, keeper does make a big difference. Yeah. Like, Pickford if you're conceded. Yeah. And Pickford kept us up last night. How long is he out for? He was out for three to four weeks. So, like, given this, okay. the break, they'll be out okay. for a few games. All right. But, like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Pickford definitely is needed. We've got Calvert Lewin coming back now, so. Oh, okay. Why, why okay. <laughs> I, I actually love him. <laughs> so do you love him? Yeah. Hopefully, he can pick up form as well because he was up and down last season. Mm. Yeah, like towards the end, because to be honest, we just kept rushing him back because he was injured all of last season and obviously we needed him. Mm-hmm. So we just kept rushing him back and rushing him back. And then when he finally started to have like some form towards the end of last season, he got a goal against Brentford, then got the the goal that saved, like, kept us up against Palace um, and looked good in both those games. Like, he was doing all the type of positional play that he's very good at. So, if he gets a run and we're not rushing him back, then I think he'll do well. Um, but my worry is just we don't have real cover for him. I thought Mopo actually played quite well against Liverpool, even though he should have scored. Um, so, that's helpful, but we don't have the same, like, like mm-hmm. our, our structure this season's actually been so much better like that's why i'm not actually panicking because mm-hmm. we the midfield signings we've made is the best our midfield has been in years like mm-hmm. even under ancelotti this midfield is better than under ancelotti we didn't know how to keep the ball under ancelotti even though we did well it was all based on counter-attacking football so i feel like now that we've actually got solid defense solid midfield when pickford's back we've got a solid goalkeeper it's just, can we capitalise on like that stability and actually get some goals to win games? Mm. And if Calvert Lewin's back and in form, then hopefully we can. Mm-hmm. But it speaks to me in a few months. We still haven't won a game. It actually, relies yeah. on having a clinical goal scorer yeah. to keep you up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah. Gordon's got like two and two. No, that's only because he wanted to be employed by Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, <laughs> speaking, speaking of Russian players back during the week, or I think it was two days ago, actually, Marshall came out with a story to French press um, about his treatment at United and how um, he played through injury through a lot of his time on the Ole. And I was just, it got me thinking, I was wondering, like, how many teams in the Premier League do we see rush players back? And what is the effect that that has on players' mental health, um, long-term performance? Etc. You saw okay. Rashford. Sorry, yeah, you saw Rashford. Rashford. Yeah, yeah, Rashford. Was a big yeah, example. Well. Yeah. Do you know what happened with Pogba then as well? It, it yeah. happened. Oh, it's happened yeah. with about Rashford. five, six players in our team. So Pogba, Marshall, Rashford. Right. It even happened with Harry Maguire. Done. Um, yes, and you and can see the drop off now of players that have been yeah. through yeah, injury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it just got me thinking, is this normal in football? Like, I don't know what is meant to be normal it's or not. It's just out of desperation. Desperation, like, yeah. Teams yeah. like City don't have to worry about it yeah. too much. We will literally, yeah. once I took a place in we don't see them for the rest of the season. <laughs> 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 they they ship them off to Barcelona to get a simple <laughs> recap, that's it. That's but it. That's but how it should be. Exactly. But I think about in the past, how players would talk about how they would get injections to play games and they'll yeah. put their bodies on the line. I think part of that as well but, is like, how much uh, we train our academy so that we yes. have a lot of academy players that can come in and fill the boots of whoever gets in yeah. for like a few games before we find someone else to like kind of and i think as well the way pep trains most of the players to end up playing out of position as well has really helped us so we've had like we had fernandinho for the most part that was kind of injured there here and there but he was out there playing in defense mm. but, like we just, I think it's just the way clubs are. So right, you're saying sort of for your team that you're less reliant on individual players. Yeah. It's easy for it's you guys to yeah. rotate. It's, it's a system you play. Yeah. You play a very, it's the same with Liverpool. It's like you could put any players into that system. They know what they do and they know what their job is. And they get, the system carries them. Yeah. Even if they're not like the, the best individual player. Mm. Whereas if you're playing in a, like, Man United, how they have, where they don't know, you know, exactly what they're playing, and it's relying on individual brilliance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then there's a lot more pressure on those individual players to play through injury, and like, whether it's that they're coming into it and not fully fit, they have to do a lot more themselves, mm. or that there aren't enough players to cover them, so you're just rushing someone back. Right. And in you guys' teams, do you, does that happen as well? Yeah, for me, my my biggest one was Kane coming back for the Champions League final. Mm, when his yeah. ligaments were not Actually, healed yeah. and he was running at five miles per hour 
and 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 it, the play he should Lucas have played getting Moore. dropped after getting that hat trick. I look and think, Poch. I love like I love Poch, and I was so upset when he when he was sacked. But for me, that's one of the biggest mistakes that he's made because you can't mm. play players who are not fit on the biggest occasion just because you're desperate for them to play because they mm. have consequences. We lost the game um, mm. and we were terrible. And I can't blame Kane for as, as poor as he was in that final because he wasn't fit. Mm. Do but... you think it's on players though to say that actually I don't think I'll be the best for the team at this time? I think it's hard because I think it depends on the manager because one of the yeah. things that I've noticed, for example, with Conte, Conte complains about our physio department when he does mm-hmm. interviews. So, and I, um, for example, was it Romero who was injured and was supposed to be out for a month and then Conte turned around and said, no, I expect him back in two weeks. And mm-hmm. he's ended up coming back and luckily he's been fine. He's not picked up another injury. But I think some managers put pressure on the medical department who probably do say, look, he's not in the right mm-hmm. condition to play. But you're right, when you've got individuals who you're so heavily reliant on, they're not going to turn around and say no, they're just no, going to play football. Exactly. So I think it, it's the the manager needs to have a better duty of care. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think we see that enough. And I think we, we've seen the impact of players like Rashford, who thankfully look, looks like he's coming back to yeah. form now. But, someone but it's who, taken him so, so long yeah, to get to that point. Long time. Injury, yeah. And I think, you know, we don't realise the impact that this will have you know, on the longevity of their of their careers when they don't rest when their body needs to. That's why I'm so worried for Saka. Yeah, because Saka... Like, he's playing, starting every single match and this is like, he's still so young and it's obviously, like you said, mm. we have the World Cup coming up and all other fixtures. We're highly dependent on him, which is why the transfer window was such a crucial part for us. And it was, I wouldn't say it was a big letdown, but we could have done so much more because mm. it was needed that, okay, listen, there's someone needs to be there just in case. Is... Know. Did Saka ever play through injury or? Not that I know of, no. Okay. I know it was like probably niggles and just like scares, but nothing too serious where he's had to like come off for a while, yeah. but no. Like I think, I remember like Tomiyasu, he was out for a while, but apart from that, most other players, it's always been niggles, but it's like, like I said, it's just that holding your breath moment because it's like, you don't know how serious it's going to be because like mm. I said, we're just not in that position to kind of lose these players because of course yeah. the season we have. I think with player fitness and stuff like that, the manager plays a big part because I think about Ole and I think about the fact that he's probably quite an old school manager where in his time you would get the injection and you would go put your life on the line. Whereas let's say modern day players, I don't think it doesn't always work. Like we've seen it in United, especially with, with Pogba. I think about Pogba all the time because he played through an ankle injury where it was so bad he had to get surgery after his, the Europa League game mm-hmm. and fans thought he was faking it. And it was just like, he's put himself on the line because the manager has expectations of him. And the result is that he's had to have a surgery and even the player, the fans of the club don't even believe that it was real. It's things like that. It's, it's where do we draw the line? No, but there isn't a line to be drawn because yeah. I feel like it's just that's how it is in football. It's like I feel like when you commit to something such as that, it's like you don't want to disappoint the team, you don't want to disappoint your fans, the manager, anything like that. And it's like, unfortunately, you see it that they would risk mm-hmm. just that one injury or one kind of moment just so they don't, you know, lose that kind of not respect, but kind of just like that you know, okay, that acknowledgement. Because then the day it's like, you know, you want to be consistent. You want to be kind of like always showing up. Yeah, but how how can you be consistent when you're not even fully fit? (sighs) Exactly. And I think it's, I think it is with the older school managers because the the sports science that they would have had isn't as good as it is now. So I think with the the access to scans and to the physios, I feel like you've got to listen to your medical department. If that, they're saying that person's not fit, they would have tried everything um, to get that player fit. But equally, you've got a Europa League final. So they, they, you know, we- But sometimes I think, do the medical department put the player's interest first? Sometimes I think they put the manager or the club's interest first. So- I mean, yeah. it doesn't really make yeah, a difference. They, they are employed by them. So. Exactly. Yeah. You just, yeah. You just yeah. Need to. It's like HR. Yeah, you can go to HR, but they still work for the company. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah. 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 But yeah, I thought that was quite interesting that Marshall came out and said those things. And it just highlighted that the, foot, the culture and football kind of still needs a little bit of work, especially when it comes to players' mental health, injury, and just things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think maybe it's more of the 
it's either got to be the Premier League or whoever the responsible body is. Like with concussion, they've had to change regulations to mm. make sure. Because mm-hmm. I'll never forget when Vertonghen, he had a head injury and then he didn't look right. He went off at the side yeah. and went back on and then he collapsed and threw up at the side of the pitch because yeah. he was clearly suffering from concussion. And the medical department just waved him back on. Like he and continued playing. Yeah, and then yeah, like, he, he said after, he was like, I don't remember. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like, like it, at that point, it's the medical department's job to be like, actually, we don't think he's okay. Like, obviously, the player is going to still want to play because he doesn't want to disappoint his manager. But but then what the what if manager says, but I don't think, I think he can still play. The After medical needs to be able to. <laughs> you need regulation course, because now exactly. we have, for example, concussion protocols yeah. where if someone goes off with a head injury, like they just cannot play. But we now even have the extra subs so the other team doesn't lose out because they've had to change those protocols to mm-hmm. make sure people take it seriously. Like five subs and stuff now. It's like yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Let's talk about the international break coming up. So England are facing Italy. Mm. Oh, gosh. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh, oh, no. No. Why is she retired now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sakase. Sakase. <laughs> How do we think that match is going to go? Hmm. I think it's going to go better than we. I think we all expected. Yeah. I mean, I was... Uh, I watched the uh, Argentina versus Italy game Um that weird glorified yeah, cup yeah, thing yeah. that they wanted to create for a bit of money, but <laughs> it, it was it was it was nice to see Italy fall apart a little. Just like yeah, it made me happy, but yeah, yeah no, I, I, I genuinely feel like it's gonna go a lot better. Mm-hmm. But that being said, looking game. at the depth that England have, hmm, hmm. I don't know. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Just, I don't you know. can never really read that much into these games. Exactly, though. It's like yeah. you give so many players like their first game and like. Like here's the appearance because they've been doing well in the league, mm. but they never like players like Bowen and stuff like that were like who were doing really well, you know. And then they get given a game, but it's like yeah, but they're not gonna play at the World Cup, like they're not gonna. <laughs> so yeah. so I'm just no, like, true, but he should be picked this time. Well, yeah. um, makes um, boy. The so the season, yeah, I don't know. I just, like people read into them so much and get so angry about these friendlies. I'm like, you can't tell until the the competition starts. Italy yeah. didn't look that. Uh, uh, to be fair, they went in like an unbeaten run, but they still didn't look that solid before the Euros mm. and then it's like no one expected them to win the Euros it's like it's not until you get to the actual competitions that you can see mm. having said that England have looked trash for the last <laughs> <two hours. laughs> so, and the one thing that was carrying through the la- them through the last few tournaments has been just their like togetherness and like it seemed like the, like even the fans like, just cheering just the yeah, whole spirit like there was like yeah. this positivity going on yeah, there whereas now the I feel like there's is that is not there and it's very much like people are saying to drop Kane and like get rid of South getting all of this and I'm like oh, I mean in, oh, in the go. in the Euros I was calling for that too but hey calling so for what both Kane. drop Kane Kane to be dropped yeah oh. to play who instead <laughs> Just a little change. I think the, the problem, I think, for me, and I, I've been calling, honestly, for Southgate to be sacked since Russia, but <laughs> is the... His tack... Like, I feel like, how can you have this crop of players and have a, a system and a setup that just feels so anti-football. Yes. Like, mm. I feel like some of the real strengths of players like Saka, like Foden, they're not exploited in the system that he plays. And I just think it's really painful, I think, to watch England games. Yes, okay, if we do well in the tournament, like, yeah, everyone gets excited. And But I think international football outside of major tournaments, is, it's like watching paint dry because yeah. his tactical setup is there's just a lot that needs doing. Do we think it solely falls on Southgate though? Or do we think the fact that the players don't generally play together could have an impact on how we look as a team? I mean, but isn't that like it's Southgate's weird. job to sort yeah. of... Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do. Like, yeah. 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 like, to be able to be able to be able to be because we're like you're switching around players so much it's like mm. why they've done okay in the in tournaments is that it's, it's been a pretty like consistent team, team. Mm. like even in the euros compared to the world cup players like walker who you were thought oh might not really get in the team Maguire, stones like just all got played again mm. they all know how to play with each other mm. like it was basically the same starting lineup every single game mm. other than like the wide forwards and they were all quite interchangeable anyway whereas when you get into these games you've got a completely different midfield you've got a completely different back line different goalkeeper different everything so it's like when and they don't play with a clear like 
game plan anyway in terms of like not a style of football so it's not like that's going to stay consistent so the only thing you're relying on and being consistent is the players and if mm. they're not the same players then you, like you said it's like what's your pain dry it's just like mm. so can we go around and say what our predictions for the Italy versus England match will be a draw <laughs> just, just purely, because I think Italy haven't looked like the same team I mean they didn't even qualify for the World Cup and I think players like Chiesa are still injured um, so I'm not expecting a proper in, uh, like Italy side to turn up but equally I also think I'm not expecting a serious England side to turn up to the game so mm-hmm. I can just see it being quite a, another boring game mm. um, to watch with a few chances and yeah I think I'm not going to draw What about you Gloria? Um, I'm torn between 2-0 um, England or 2-1 I think I think they'll still win it but it won't be an exciting game to watch Chris? Mm. 1-0 to England Marva? No Pickford no party so. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm going to beat Ramsdale Rams- one, one, one. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd say two one to England. And then for a second international game, we're gonna be playing Germany. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. oh. oh okay. You already said it's a wrap, no hope oh, in yeah. England. Actually, I had to think about the forwards because they'd like to play um what's his name? What's his name? You've got Sonny. I think Germany will be better now. Better like they, they had a new manager and now that and like a good manager, now they're settling in. I've, I reckon they'll be quite good. Yeah. Mm. So are we gonna lose that match, you're saying? I think a draw. It just it depends what it? who they're is playing, it isn't it? At Wembley yeah, or... It's really hard to play. Uh, is it in Germany? Do you uh, it's in I think it's in Wembley. Oh, oh. Interesting. It's gonna be a dead game though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's almost the think World Cup. Like yeah, yeah. it's a thing to know. I think no, have one, some, I think have one some all. belief. I think one yeah, I, think one like, all. Gen- I feel like ge- like you never see Germany in full form until they reach the yeah, major tournaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I they, agree. They, they they go to another level. So mm, mm. maybe another draw. Yeah, I think a draw. Yeah, I think a draw. Okay, you guys clearly don't mm. have any hope in England. <laughs> so when it's the friendly, let's wait until the World Cup to get. I feel like we will. Okay, but like, even in the World Cup, like, so how do you expect us to play? Not very really well. I I think honestly, I think getting to the semi final of the World Cup, where some of the really really good nations did not play well, mm. I expect Brazil to turn up. I expect Argentina, Argentina to turn yeah. up. Like I I genuinely think. If the, you know, I expect France to do, I think if the, the countries, some of our, I would say countries that are better than our, well, p- play a better system and mm-hmm. a way of playing than our, our national team, it, it, it would, quarterfinals, maybe semifinals at best. I, mm-hmm. I generally, yeah. like, I, even the Euros, sure I don't sure think, is, yeah. it wasn't necessarily because we played really, really, really well. It was just because some of the other nations... I think we, we had easier we teams. Germany. Yeah. We beat Germany. That was a good yeah. game. Well, Denmark, Denmark that was the worst, was a, that was the that worst was a Germany team we've seen in years. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a very <laughs> questionable team. But Denmark was a good team that you played against. That was yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. just the way it ended. So for the them. World Cup, no one's going to be singing this coming home. Nah, quarterfinal straight. I've sung already. The summer, <laughs> summer, <laughs> summer, <laughs> I said quarterfinal. So, yeah. You know what? Even the group, like, I know people are saying it's an easy group. I don't think it's that. What you do have in the group? USA, USA, Iran, and Wales. But Wales is a team that, like, England-Wales, Wales Wales are always going to turn up. Mm. And if Gareth gets fit in the MLS... (laughs) He's just just using that as pre-season. Exactly. Yeah. And and the USA, I feel like we're going to... They've got a lot of players now who are playing in Europe um, in in decent sides. I think we'll, we'll... they're gonna cause cause us a problem. I'm not saying that like like England should win that group. Don't get me wrong. Yes. It's not that like if they don't, it's not like oh they had a hard group. Obviously, it's a group they should win. But I just mean if they come into it not fully confident, and if the cracks start showing early on and they don't get it together, quarterfinals. It's it's a, it's a <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> it's a group they could actually capitulate in. Like mm. it feels very much like a group we've seen before, like in the old school England. Who no, just we have to lose the first game. Yeah. And then you're under pressure. No, that's not. That's not. That's not, that's not, that's not I, I believe we'll definitely get out of the groups. But as she said, if we don't come into the groups not confident, then it's a problem. But yeah, there are some good teams, I think. No, definitely not Brazil. Group, Brazil, Argentina <laughs> are definitely the ones to watch out for. Yeah. Go on, Brazil. 
<laughs> Wait, you're not supporting England? Oh, no, oh. England's like my fourth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> top three: Brazil, France, Ghana, and then it's England. Ghana, 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 I would like to see Messi get, get the World Cup, but can't I? Probably oh, see Belgium's in the film. I mean, it is the last World Cup since you and this, so yeah. 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 that would be nice. Yeah. No, I'd rather see Brazil, like, because I think, because I think Brazil embody football, they live in yeah. Brazil, football that's their religion. Yeah. So so I, I feel happy when I see Brazil doing well. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I know growing up, Nigeria faced Brazil a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> it might be interesting to see. Um, let's move on to listener questions. The first question I've got here is, do you believe that Tuchel is one of Chelsea's legendary managers? <coughs> <laughs> oh, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Mourinho is still alive, you know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, um, okay, because he got us the um, Champions League, you can't discredit his work. But I think, like Joe said, Mourinho is still alive. So. Yeah, um, he's still yeah the but if the question is one of. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, one, yeah, of, one of. One of, yeah. One of? One of. Mm-hmm. One of? Yeah. Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, because you guys were trying to cook me because I, th- I said that the, the Champions League was fugazi. What? <laughs> 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 but yeah, no. And but, um, apparently I can't really talk because, you know, we haven't won Premier, uh, Champions League yet. But, like, but no, that logic isn't Di Matteo. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. he's won a championship. And he got sacked in the you, same kind yeah. of year. <laughs> Another one. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Breeze off camera saying, no. <laughs> no, because if, no if you're saying Tuchel is legendary because of a CL, then Di Matteo is also no. legendary. Oh, exactly, yeah. Yeah, but I'm too sure yeah. touch it. I'm a copy of saying this, but Chelsea were in pretty much every single final possible. And it's still not too sure. I'm not saying that many, but he, he <laughs> reached <laughs> finals. Please, <laughs> let's clarify that. Yeah, but, like... No, uh, yeah, yeah. In in his short every final, yeah, first. In, in period, I would say he's one of Chelsea's best managers that they've had. Hmm. Yeah, one of. One of the best managers. I want to so say. Wait, like who are legends. your top three best managers that Chelsea have ever had? Yeah, I'll have to Mourinho first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only Chelsea fans um, like him. I would say I put Conte second. Frankie Ooh. Lampard. <laughs> yeah, I can put some respect on Conte. To be fair, Conte did really well at Chelsea. Breathe, 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 breathe. <laughs> breathe. <laughs> you have to put some respect on Conte. What did you say, breathe in? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, if it's if it's not if it's not Conte, then who? Goes hitting. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Ancelotti. Ancelotti. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ancelotti. Yes. Yeah. She said, "Oh yeah." Top three. Okay. Let's not that again. Let's not that again. Top three, three. Top three. Chelsea managers. Okay. Okay, Mourinho's definitely first. Okay. Mourinho. Um, Conte. Conte. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm bet- I'm torn between. Okay, I put um, Ancelotti second, and then Conte. So that means Tuchel's not really in the legendary no, state. Top, top five. Top five. So you know, is he fourth? Okay. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. Ooh. Why is Chelsea so overrated by Chelsea fans? Why? Too cool. Oh, so oh sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> You're going to have to ask them. I don't know. I think, I think it's the, the Champions League. That's what's getting to them. Mm. But he, he was a good manager in terms of like, he did what he needed to do. But I think... Who would you say was a better manager? Conte? Or too cool. Mm. Uh, I say Conte. <laughs> no, but why do you don't just ignore her? <laughs> why do why do you say Conte? Stick to your words. Stick no. to it. <laughs> don't let her crazy. <laughs> Sure, now, now, no, no, don't let her finish. 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 Don't in after the invasion of Ukraine, the, the, <laughs> but that not like, no, 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 no
Um, to, to, I think to win the Champions League in your first season, to then have to carry the club and to return to the Champions League when the man was offering to drive the bus to the games, I would say, okay, yes, winning the winning the Premier League is the pinnacle, but Conte won it. And I'm saying this because Conte is my manager now. Conte won it in in after Chelsea finished tenth, and then had the investment. Hmm. Good point. Anyone else have any other All I'm saying is that? drill members have been charged with more time than Tuchel has for all these crimes <laughs> that he's committed on pay. I'm telling you right now, because I'm tired. You know what, yeah? The, the football was so enjoyable at first, but it was just like every other week you see the lineup and you had 90% of it being defence. Like, it was just like, what were you guys trying to fight for so bad that you need to defend your goal? Like <laughs> They defended the goal in the Champions League final. Though. Yeah, you know exactly. what? It wasn't even a goalkeeping mistake. Like, I know that made you guys win. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna hold that. Still won it, so let's move on to the next question. This is slightly different type of question, but it's have you ever received excessive hate from men because you're in you're women in the industry? Marvel, go on. <laughs> she has stories for days. I have stories for days. Um, yeah, all the time, to be honest. Like, even just um, look at our TikTok comments. Actually, you can't because we delete them, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, kids writing stuff about just like, mm. just bullshit about, yeah, why are women talking about football? Why are we not? Like, what are you on about? Like, yeah, get it all the time. Um, I remember I once tweeted when Phil Neville got. Um, got the job of the England women's job and I was like oh he's never managed a team before that's a bit of a weird thing suddenly thousands of Phil Neville fans came out of the woodwork saying like <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about blah, blah, blah. you know nothing about football fuck off I was like all right I didn't know so many people love Phil Neville um, <laughs> yeah all the time but then even just things like um working in football I've gone to I once went to report on a, a game at Goodison and um I turned up and the guy was like um Abigail and I was like no, he was mm. like, oh, Marva. I was like, yeah, because I was one of two women who were reporting, like two of us mm. in like, there's like 60, 70 reporters there that he knew who I was just because <laughs> we were the only two women. So um, yeah, it happens all the time, whether it's like deliberate or just feeling out of place because of what it is. And I've just, I've had like been <laughs> at a game when people are saying, um, explain the offside rule to me, but getting it wrong. Like, I remember oh once it was like a, oh, no. it was at Chelsea actually it was Evan Chelsea game and um, the goalkeeper was taking a goal kick and Richarlison was offside but it's a goal kick so he can't be offside mm -hmm. the guy behind me screaming like yeah the fuck onside <laughs> <laughs> I was like I was like oh, I just don't know I was like, oh, no, like I was like you can't you can't be you can't be offside from a goal kick he's like I think you can love and I was like it's that love. Yeah, it's just all the time. <laughs> Does anyone else have any stories? Yeah, it's like the offside share? rule. It's when you say not trouble. Okay, explain the offside rule to me. I'm just like, what does that mean? I just feel like we need to get a better question because who doesn't know what that is at this point? It's like, not really, it's probably not us. Like, oh, you only watch football for the men. No. <laughs> yeah. I think it's that like automatic assumption that our opinion is uh, unqualified yes. because we are women mm. um, and I think that tends to be the default kind of response you know even even going to the football and being at the football even on Wednesday at the Spurs Marseille game obviously I'm there I'm commentating on the game I was pissed off because we we're not playing well mm. and people are looking as, as, as if I'm crazy and it's like no my opinion is valid and mm -hmm. I think it's almost feeling like you said, it's like out of like as if we're out of place. Um, but I can say, is it improving? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it is because I think the the culture of football is 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 strong and it's deep. Mm -hmm. And I, yes, I think we're seeing more investment and there's more room for 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 women. Um, but I think your everyday typical fan that opinion is, is still the mm. same. And I feel like we even see it with female commentators or pundits. Like we yeah. see it with Alex Scott still. She is she is an ex-professional football player, 
how can her opinions not be valid? Exactly. What have you yeah. done? Do you even play football professionally? Yeah. <laughs> even, you know, when they put the byline and if they have like Farrah Williams or Alex Scott and it will be like a hundred and whatever caps mm-hmm. and then it would be like for, for whatever the, the guy that's on played in the third round of the FA Cup. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then get, like, and they just get, and yeah, and, and it's really exhausting yeah, because I'm one thing that I, I find that when, when there is a major tournament and you do get the likes of like any Aluko and, and whoever it is, if you, they go and put them on the rubbish games as, yes. as well, but they turn up and they do their research. They're ready to to be a pundit for the game, and and you don't get that. And and it's almost as if you have to work twice as hard. Yeah, because also they're allowed to be wrong. Like mm. how, exactly. ma- how many times we are male pundits wrong? Yeah. <laughs> they make outlandish statements. You're allowed to do that. All of us, like this is what this podcast is. We make outlandish statements. Exactly. But when men do it, you don't get that same like <laughs> same yeah. criticism. Or you do, it doesn't get based on their gender. Mm-hmm. But I would say that like I remember being at, at school and college and stuff, and I remember back in the day where like Gabby Logan would would present match of the day now and then, just like on the off chance. The comments I would see like would be insane. Whereas now. Yeah, Alex Scott gets a lot of hate and like shout out to her and all the sort of women like her who are trailblazing it and making it happen because now it's it's normal to see it. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. even 10 years ago, it wasn't normal to see it. So I think the more it happens, you just, the game's changing, you just get used to it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they'll, they'll get used yeah, to it. We're not they're on, they're we're on the wrong anywhere. side. Yeah. They're on the wrong side of history. Like you're going to be left behind, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, we'll end it there. Thank you everyone for listening to today's episode. Um, please make sure to like, subscribe and follow us on our social channels. Um, See you next time.